Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. To 23rd or somewhere over there. And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be there until I bring you word. For Herod is about to seek the child to destroy him. And he arose, and he rose, and took the young child as his, and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And he was there until death of Herod, so that I might be fulfilled with which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. But Herod having Experience, behold, I don't seem good tonight, today. But Herod having expired, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in the dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for the ones who sought the child's life are dead. And he arose and took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus reigned in Judea, in his father's Herod's place, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that I might be fulfilled, with, so that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. He shall be called a Nazarite. Amen. Three hundred sixty-five days of new beginnings, of new beginnings. We have uh, three hundred sixty-five pages to write a new story in our lives. Praise God for that, right? Well, I thought to say before I start talking, Happy Sunday and a Merry Christmas. To, and I was thinking also to say, well, today we are blessed by the best, but the one that says blessed by the best is not here today, so... But we are blessed by the best anyway. Anyway, And praise God for God's blessings because he is blessing us those 360, how many days we have, 2016? Well, whatever. He has been blessing every day of our 2006 year. The same way he is going to bless us the, the next 365 days and be there, 65 days, and be there with us. He will. He will. Well, uh, did Santa Claus visit your home last night? Yeah. What did you got, Gary? What he brought you? He brought you your wife again? Again and again. All right. Great gift. What do you got? You got toys? Wow, nice. Who else got visited by Santa? Yes. You got tools? Wow. <laughs> All right, who else, who else, who else find uh, uh, nice toys around home? Come on, tell me. All right, what do you got? You want what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. I wonder if he... 
I wonder if he gave it to you because he wants to give it to you, but he probably bought it for you, but for him to enjoy it, right? Yes. Oh, you got, oh, okay, but I heard that you're going to keep it at, at, at grandma's mother home. No? You're not going to keep it at, at your grandma home? Yeah? Yeah? Who else? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Woo. The new beginning. At my home, we got, uh, at my home, we have uh, the visit of the Mexican Santa Claus. He came from all the way to Mexico. You can ask those kids. Yeah. He came all the way from Mexico. And he, he ate some tortillas and, and, and uh, yeah, he, he was trying to take some of uh, Gloria's flour tortillas. We saw them around the place and the chimney. That Santa, Mexican Santa Claus is crazy. <laughs> he delivered his presents to my grandkids. But he didn't brought his Santa deers. As you know, he got his donkey. Yeah. And his chihuahua dog. Huh? He what? He surf? No, he's not a surfer. <laughs> yeah? I got to see that book. Maybe I need to know that. Yeah. You know, he eats salsa and chips. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a Charlie Brown cartoon several years ago, Lucy approaches Charlie and happily yells out, Merry Christmas! I don't know if you remember that. Then, in the spirit of the season, she says, I think we ought to bury past difference and try to be kind. Charlie Brown, philosophically, he asks, why does it only have to be this time of the year? Why can it be this way all year long? And Lucy looks disgustedly at him and replies, what are you, some kind of fanatic? It would be fantastic if Christmas could last all year long. Could be great. The great spirit. You know, looks like, like something happened around us. We're in the streets. We're in the, the Walmart. We are wherever we go. We see strangers and we said, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Something that we don't say to them, we see it in another regular day of the 360-something days. Christmas uh, brings joy, brings the desire to get connected with people, to say something nice. So it can be fantastic if we keep the spirit of Christmas these 365 days. It will be fantastic if Christmas could last all year long. The truth is that most of us have already begun our journey down from the mountaintop of our joy to the world and peace on earth, to the valley of the shadow of fast-paced lives. You know, as soon as we cross Christmas, we know that we're going to get into our regular routines. Vacations are done. We had to get back to our uh, regular routines. With exception if you're a pastor. If you're a pastor, after Christmas you can get vacations. <laughs> the obscure event of a, a harried flight of Joseph and Mary uh, and Jesus into Egypt opens a highway before us to 365 New Christmas beginnings. 
2017 is, is, is not a leap year. So, there are 365 days in a year, 52 weeks and one day, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes, 31 million, 536,000 seconds. You see, we still have a long way to go. There are exactly, in the 2000 year, 52 Mondays, 52 Tuesdays, 52 Wednesdays, 52 Thursdays, 53 Fridays, 52 Saturdays, and how many Sundays? 53 Sundays. Got you? <laughs> we have 53 Sundays in the year 2017. 365 days of new beginnings. Of new beginnings. So a, a new beginning of trust is there for us. Joseph's sensitivity to God demonstrates his total and absolutely, completely trust in God's prompting and direction. Joseph trusts the lead of God to take his family out of harm way. He did it, and that's the scripture. And he arose and took the young child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. He trusts God. He was not like um, some of us when someone said, don't turn, just run. We turn and when it happens. So he heard God's voice saying, hey, it's time to move on, run to Egypt. And he didn't question, he just did, he followed. Joseph's trust led him back to Israel at the proper time. And he was there until the death of Herod, so that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. What else? Joseph's trust. Lead him back to Israel? Yes. It happens. He trusts God in every moment of his life. But Herod having expired, behold, but Herod having expired, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Joseph trust led him back to Israel as the prophet time. You know, Joseph trust God. He was paying attention to God's voice. The thing is that we have 365 days this year to do the same, to trust in God and to put attention to his word, to what his word is telling to us, to our hearts, to what we need to do for good, for better. We need to pay attention to God's voice this year. Following God's leadership takes an adulterated trust, not on occasionally, but daily. Something we need to learn or remember today is that we cannot expect to hear God's, God speak in a crisis if we don't recognize his voice in a calm. If we recognize God's voice in the calm, we are going to recognize his voice on the storm. He recognizes our voices, our thousands, millions, Trillions of voices, he recognizes who is speaking to him, and he knows us by name. I remember years, years back, I was in South Florida, and we went to uh, the fairgrounds, and I got into one of those things that get you to the high and transport, and I saw, I mean, thousands of people walking, and I was able to hear the people's voices from the high. And, and, 
And just like that kind of sound of the voices. And I was not able to recognize what they were saying. And I said, God, how great you are. That when I'm walking in the middle of all the multitude of people, if I said a prayer, you know that it's me. So if we are connected with God on this next year, during the good times, we're going to be able to hear his voice during the difficult times. We're going to be able to make the right choices because we are going to follow our God's lead. When we're in crisis, God says to us, I love you, trust me. And we hear that, and we know that he's there with us and for us. When we are in difficult situations, feel free to ask God, what should I do? And pay attention because he's going to guide you. He's going to tell you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to speak to your heart. Or he's going to send someone to speak to you. Just learn to hear God's voice. Sometimes the answer may seem scary, but one thing I'm sure of, he never is going to leave us alone. Never. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, I got a bike, something like that. No, I remember, that was my first, my first bike. That's my sister, Patricia. And that was uh, my Christmas tree. I found that picture. That's a handsome guy, right? <laughs> you know, um, before we had a tree, all we had was a little dry branch from outside. And, and my, my grandma, she used to decorate it, put some stuff, and we were happy like that. But then we have a better times, and then we were able to get a Christmas tree, and, and I was able to get my bike. But I don't know what I was thinking to say when I saw that picture, but well. Okay, I remember now. <laughs> I was talking about trust. My grandfather, he, he gave me, well, you know, Santa Claus gave me that, that bike. But my grandfather, he, he was there with me when I learned to, to, to drive it, to ride in it. He was holding it, so I was feeling comfortable. I was feeling secure until there was a moment that he just let me go. And then I realized that I was able. But as long as he knew I was not feel, feeling secure, he was taking care of it. The same way God takes care of us, 365 days of the year. And we are riding our bikes and we don't feel secure. God is holding us. Until he know that we can, he let us go. By the way, that's me again. Those are my sisters. But the handsome them on the picture is just me. <laughs> yeah. And the other picture was on the plaza. I saw those pictures today. I said, well, I should put it there and then show uh, every one of you something about me when I was a kid. All right, 365 days of new beginnings, a new beginning of spiritual life. That's what is in front of us. The opportunity to start again of a new spiritual life. You know, I don't want to be one of the, the people that knows God only by ear. Because there are so many people outside those doors that knows God by ear. I want to know and to experience God in my life. The next 365 years. I want to know him as my friend, as my dad, as my God, as my Lord, as my Savior. I want to experience him. So this year... It's a year of a spiritual life. And that's what I want for you. I want you to experience God in a spiritual way the next 365 days.
And I know that you can. Experiencing, experiencing God in our lives is not just religion. It's experiencing. It's being a friend. It's being able to touch him. It's being able to feel him. And I know that you can. So next year is a year of new beginnings for our spiritual life. I believe the journey to Egypt strengthened Joseph and Mary, the spiritual life. Because they were able to experience God closer, even closer than they, they did. These two people were already spiritual sensitive. We should be more spiritual sensitive. And we can. Now let me tell you that nobody else in, in, in all the world was uh, invested with the care of God's son, but Joseph and Mary. And why do you think God trusts them? Because God knew that they were spiritual, that they were sensitive. God knew that they were close to him. And he knew that he could trust Jesus to Mary and Joseph. And I know that God wants to trust us more this coming year because he knows that we know him. Spirit to grow and understanding must never stop. Spirit to grow and understanding must never, never, ever stop in our lives. God wants us to develop a spiritual life. Let's do it. Let's take the challenge. Let's pray more. Let's get to know the scripture more. And please don't tell me, oh, I know the scripture already. Yes. But let's know the one that is talking to us through the scripture. Every time I, 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 I got the scripture and I read it, I see what I learn. I see what I hear. I see what I see. But as I see and I hear something new and different and fresh, because the Spirit speaks to us. I can preach to you a whole year on one chapter of the Bible, and every time it's going to be different. Because every time God is going to be speaking to my heart, I want you to see God speaking to you in the Scripture. I want you to hear God's voice on the Scripture. And I know that you can. So church, Mary and, and Joseph, they understood. And they were full of God because they want to, because they desire to. And God trusts them with the life of Jesus. So God wants to trust us more with the ministry he has put in of our church here in Callahan. So let's do it. I know that we can. Let's pray. Here, Lord, in, the, in this place, we're gathering, Lord, with our hearts open to you and to your presence. We take, Lord, the step ahead, and we want to be in a new way of communion with you. We want to be open to you. We want to understand your word more. We want you to speak to us, Lord. We need you. These 365 days of our life, of this coming year, we need you, Lord. We need you. We need you to be present with us when we worship you, when we read the scriptures, when we are driving, when we are at, uh, at our home, where we are at our work, when we are at school. We need you there, Lord. We want to be able to hear your voice and recognize it, Lord. We want to be connected with you. Lord, bless our church and bless our people, Lord, this year. It's my prayer, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And remember this, that surely the Lord is in this place. Amen. We, have, uh, we do have a couple of prayer requests here. One is from uh, Jerry Snipes, and she's saying that um, uh, B.D. Lewis is healing from surgery. And Mark... 
uh, Mackinish. That's one Irish name I hadn't come across yet. Uh, my mother's name was McGarity, by the way. Um, unfortunately, uh, she wants to ask you to pray for the family because he passed away yesterday. And then uh, Darlene uh, Sh uh, Schmallenberg, okay, kind of, I would, yeah, uh, well, I, I, I took German, but I couldn't, couldn't quite make that out. She's suffering from back problems, so uh, please remember her in your prayers. And of course, uh, remember Tyler Morris while he's deployed. <coughs> and also from Beth, um, Beatrice uh, and Horace <coughs> Ricks are 81 years married today. Uh, he's 100 and she's 99. Maybe you saw that wow. in the, the newspaper. They were married on Christmas Day, and the reason they gave was, well, everybody was off on Christmas, and they, everybody could get together. <laughs> That's what we have, Pastor. Uh, I, have a I have a prayer request. Um, I want to make sure that I pray for the fire department here. He works over at 70 in uh, O'Neill. He was involved in a really bad motorcycle accident. He has a um, facial fracture. It was very small, a head injury, some fractured ribs, a leg is going to have to have multiple surgeries. And um, he is in ICU over at UF. He should, they said he's doing pretty good. They excavated, they took the tube out yesterday. So um, he's doing better. He's breathing on his own now. And he is sitting up this morning, she said, and drinking a little bit of water. So. If we'll keep them in your prayers, his name is Curtis Bollinger. So, um, very good lieutenant. Let's go ahead. I want to. This church is so close to my heart and so precious. And I want to thank all of you for praying for me and for your cards and for your visits. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift to you our hearts. And this year, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for all you give to us. 
Thank you for all you provide. Thank you because you have been taking care of every single need that we have. This year, Lord, you have been with us during the difficult times, during the difficult moments, and we haven't been alone because you have been there. And we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we lift to you today the names of the people, Lord, that have been said today. The request, the prayer request, and the ones that has been unspoken. We lift them to you, Lord, knowing that you take care of us. We lift them to you, Lord, knowing that you are the one that gives us healing. You are the one that, that work, Lord, in our situations. You are the one that are at our side when we feel lonely and despair. You are there. We lift to you today, Lord, in a special way, Lord, the people, Lord, that, that, that takes care of our security, of our health. We pray for those, Lord, who are overseas, Lord, for our forces. We pray, Lord, for you to be with them in, 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 in this day and to protect them and to bless them and to let them feel our love, Lord, and our care. So we send them, Lord, our prayers to our soldiers, to our Marines, to our Navy, to our Air Force, to our Guard Coast. Bless them, Lord, where they are. Father, as well, we pray for our authorities, Lord, for our sheriffs, for our police, for our state troopers, for those that work with the uh, law and order, Lord. And we give you thanks, Lord, for their lives. Many of them, Lord, worked last night and yesterday, they, and they didn't, they, they, they didn't uh, be at home with their children, with their loved ones, Lord because they were taking care of our security. Lord, we pray for doctors, for nurses, for therapists, for all the people that take care of the ones that are sick, ill, or, or, or the ones that had an accident, Lord. We give you thanks for their lives. And we pray for blessings upon them, Lord. Once again, Lord, thank you for this year. This year of blessings, this year, Lord, that you, you have been showing us how much you love us. And thank you, Lord, for this, the first six months that uh, you gave me as a pastor in this church. Help us, Lord, to work together for your kingdom and to be one. Working hard, Lord, to see our church grow, not only in number, but spiritually. To see our church grow, Lord, and extend the church's arms, Lord, to our community. All these prayers, Lord, and those that, that, that escape from my mind, Lord, we lift it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
We wish you a happy Merry Christmas, a Feliz Navidad, a Prospero Año y Felicidad. You know what it means because you know the words already. <laughs> so have a great year. The 2017 is, is, is waiting for us. Okay? Let's take it in, in the best way we can. Let's enjoy it. But also we, we give thanks God for this year that he gave to us. And we give thanks God for the opportunity that he gave us to serve him in, in, in Callahan. And I give thanks God for this mariachi here. <laughs> yes, thank you. And it took you six months to get a mariachi band. It took six months to get a mariachi band. You know, we don't have a praise team, but we have a mariachi band, okay? <laughs> God bless you. Merry Christmas. And remember to what? Invite someone, okay? God bless you.